You know, some salespeople have the most problem with objections. I mean, real problems with objections. And, but here's the thing. As a salesperson, you don't have to cower in fear and hide. When you get objections, in actual fact, you can come out of your shell. And you can learn how to handle objections really well. If you only do four things, only four things, four simple steps. And the first one is listen. Listen to your prospect. Did they give you an objection? Now, I mean, the word listen is used a lot. I mean, they say you should listen more to your colleagues, you should listen more to your <coughs> prospects, you should listen more to your customers. Yeah, sure, you know, listen. But really, what is listening? And here's my definition of listening. You have truly listened to your prospect if you have put on their shoes. That's right, their shoes. If you have put on their shoes, you would have listened to your customer. Now, what does putting on their shoes mean? I mean, don't, don't literally ask them for their shoes to put it on. Uh, what this means is that you are empathizing with your prospect. If your prospect gives you an objection and says it's too expensive, your job is to truly listen, but not only listen, to empathize and to put yourself in their shoes on why they're saying it's too expensive. So step number one, when you get an objection, is to listen and truly listen why he is saying what he's saying. Number two, when you get an objection, right, you know, listening is a constant thing, but when you get an objection, be on their side. Cushion the objection. I mean, literally cushion. Yes, I have, you know, I make silly merchandise sometimes. So, and it, it really means cushion. So what is cushion? Cushioning an objection is actually, well, it's like this. If you have two hand, one hand here and one hand here, and they're both punching each other, it's not very painful. If you don't cushion it, it becomes very painful. So cushioning is actually that space you have between them giving you the objection and you answering the objection. So cushioning is actually being on their side just being on their side. It's not agreeing with their objection. You know what most people would do? What most salespeople would do is that they get straight away to the answer. It's like saying, it's like the salesperson is saying that the prospect is wrong. Let me give you an example. A prospect comes up to you and says, it's too expensive. Most salespeople would go, no, it's not expensive. This is, the market is actually really cheap. Oh, this is very close to, I mean, we don't have any more margins. Look, the prospect is saying it's too expensive. If you are saying it's not, you are saying that he's wrong. And prospects hate to be wrong. So to cushion, you can say things like, instead of saying no and disagree with the customer, you can say things like, I understand what you mean. Or, you know, I hear what you say. Or, you know, if they tell you that it's too expensive, you could say something like, I'm sure you want the most value for your money. You could also say something like, if I were you, I would do the same. So these are all examples of different kinds of cushions. Mind you, cushioning is not agreeing. If they give you an objection, example, it's too expensive. Please don't go, yes, it's too expensive. If your product is too expensive, why are you even selling it? Okay? So, again, cushioning is being on their side, not agreeing with them. So, number one, when you get an objection, number one, what you do is listen. Number two, what you do is cushion, be on their side. Number three, you need to test the objection. Now, what is testing the objection? Testing an objection is like digging for the truth digging for the real reason behind the objection. 
you you are there to find out what is really their concern. Now let me give you an example. If your girlfriend or wife, or I mean, or if you're a girl, you know, then you know, if your boyfriend or husband uh, says, "I have no time for a movie," you know what sale, most salespeople will do? They go, "Okay, let's look at your time schedule." And then let's see what you do in the day, and let's see whether you have time for a movie. That's what most salespeople do. I'm sure you guys don't. I'm sure you don't do it for your girlfriend or boyfriend. But here's the thing: if we don't do that for our partners, why do we do it for our customers or prospects? Instead, what we do is we dig. If our girlfriend tells us, "I have no time for a movie." We dig. We'd actually find out what is the real reason behind them saying that. We'd ask them, "Oh, you know, how are you feeling today? You know, you look upset, or you know." And here's the thing: this is what a lot of uh, prospects do as well. When they give you an objection, sometimes it doesn't mean they're lying. It just means that sometimes. Look, it's hard to say no to a salesperson. It's hard to say no to anyone. So, in, a, in sometimes it happens that a customer would give all these reasons for them not to buy, and it comes up as objections. You know, just so they don't offend you, just so you know you'd leave and you know you'd still be okay. So, your job as a salesperson is to test the objections, to dig for the truth, as much as you dig for the truth when your girlfriend tells you, "I have no time for a movie." So again, number one, listen, really empathize. Number two, you cushion. All right, you want to soften the blow. You want to be on their side. You want to show them that you're not against them. And number three, you test the objection. You want to dig for the truth. You want to find out the real objection. And only then can you do number four, which is handle the objections. Because if you do number four first, if you handle the objection first. Without first listening, cushioning, or testing, you are, in most cases, going to handle the wrong objection. It's a smokescreen. So, more on handling objection or how to handle objections on other videos in this site.